Hey everyone, it's time again to recap the latest news from the PV solar industry compiled by the American Solar Energy Society. I'm Jay Warmke with SolarPVTraining.com and this is what's happening in the wonderful world of solar for the week of May 25th. The big news in the world of solar is that the House passed a reconciliation legislation that effectively seeks to eliminate nearly every renewable energy incentive that is currently in place that is designed to promote investment in wind and solar. Now here's a brief rundown. The bill will end the 30% residential solar investment tax credit by the end of this year and the applicability of residential solar leases for tax credits. The ITC, which is the investment tax credit, and the PTC, the production tax credit, uh, for commercial and utility scale projects would go away completely for any project not placed in service by the end of 2028. It does preserve the full value of the manufacturing tax credits through 2029 before phasing them out completely in 2031. Uh, but then there are a couple of poison pill provisions put into this legislation that are designed essentially to prevent any renewable energy projects from moving forward. These include the fact that Republican House members added a 60-day start of construction deadline on all clean energy projects. This is a provision that's considered impossible to meet because it essentially takes 12 to 18 months to get permitting in order to begin a project of this size. Uh, it is anticipated that it will kill all renewable energy projects except those already under construction. The bill also introduces new restrictions on taxpayer eligibility um, for tax credits if they use components or subcomponents manufactured by what's known as an FEOC or a foreign entity of concern. Now, most solar insiders or industry insiders feel that this provision effectively disqualifies any solar installation um, as the use of any item that incorporates Chinese-made components or subcomponents, even a nut or a bolt, uh, which is, uh, is the vast amount of uh, the vast majority of the solar equipment that's out there, would be disqualified from receiving tax credits. Now, the budget process now moves on to the Senate for consideration. A committee in the California State Assembly has passed a bill that severely reduces a solar project owner's net metering compensation when the property is sold. In 2021, California passed NEM 3.0, uh, which reduced net metering compensation uh, by about 75%. Those with existing net metering contracts were grandfathered under that legislation or allowed to keep their better contract for up to 20 years. Under current California utility law, solar projects uh, that are transferred to a new property owner can keep the original net metering contract until that contract expires. Now, under this new proposal, if a property that includes a solar array is transferred to another owner, uh, then the current net metering agreement is considered null and void, and the newer reduced net metering 3.0 provisions would go into effect. Now, after passing the Assembly Appropriations Committee, this bill is expected to appear again at the California State Assembly floor this week for further deliberation. Analysts project the electricity demand in the United States will grow by about 25% by 2030 and 78% by 2050, according to a new report from global consulting firm Inner City Fund, or ICF. The forecast marks a sharp increase from historical trends and projections from 2024. The report cited artificial intelligence, cloud services, cryptocurrency, miner, uh, cryptocurrency mining, uh, as key drivers behind demand rise, along with expanded use of electric vehicles, building electrification, and the growth of data centers. Uh, the, if substantial, substantial new generation capacity is not added and added quickly, the ICF modeling suggests that the U.S. will face significant power shortfalls by as early as 2028. Additional tariffs will be imposed on solar panel imports from Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. 
uh, after the U.S. International Trade Commission voted that the domestic solar industry is materially injured by panels from those nations. This finding follows the U.S. Commerce Department's April 2024 determination in an anti-dumping and countervailing duty investigation into solar imports from these four Southeast Asian countries, which resulted in additional tariff proposed on them of over 3,400% on some imported panels. In 2024, approximately 80% of the solar panels installed in the U.S. were imported, and of these, 81% were imported from these four specific Southeast Asian nations. In anticipation of increased tariffs, imports from these nations have fallen off dramatically in recent months. Following the ITC's founding, finding, uh, the Commerce Department is expected to issue new orders on June 9th and update the tariff rates for the four countries. These tariffs will impact crystalline silicon photovoltaic cells, whether or not they're assembled into modules imported from the four countries. And this will be on top of President Trump's new 10% base tariff rate on all countries. And that's the news from the solar industry from this week. We'll see you next week.